You know those things in your business that are like super important, but also super boring? That's what we're here to talk about today. (laughs) Specifically, your shop policies. Please don't run away. I promise you, I'll try to make this as interesting as possible, but also it is actually really, really important. So this is something that you should not gloss over or skip over or forget about. And I want to encourage you today to think about why it's important, why it's going to protect your customer and also why shop policies and how shop policies are important for you as a business owner. So hello, welcome back. Or if you've never seen me before, welcome to my channel. My name is Jess Van Den. I've been selling my own handmade jewelry under the Ethereal label since 2008, and I've been fully self-employed since 2010. So over the years running a business, you are going to come up against problems, whether they're problems of your making or problems of your customers making. Either way, you're going to have a problem or two or five or 10 or 20. Depends. Anyway, the best way to deal with these problems is to actually have a policy for dealing with them before they arise, because this makes it so much easier and so much less stressful to deal with problems when they arise. If you have a policy in place that your customer could have been aware of, let's be honest, most of them probably haven't read them, but they're there. Uh, And then you can use those policies to help you make a decision as to what to do when these problems arise. Okay. So that is one of the reasons why policies are so important. They protect you. They protect your customer. They lay out the expectations of what you will and won't do for your customer. So What exactly are your policies? What do they need to include? That is what I'm going to cover in this video today. It doesn't matter what venue you sell on, where you sell online. I strongly encourage you to set up a policy document on your website. Now, if you sell somewhere like Etsy, they have policies sort of forced upon you. You know, you have to do what they say. They have a list of policies you have to make drop down decisions on. But if you have your own website or you sell somewhere else, chances are you just have to set up your own policies page. And I'm going to cover the stuff that you really need to have on that page right now. Okay, I'm just going to start with the policies that Etsy makes you deal with because they're all things you have to deal with anyway. And for those of you who do have an Etsy shop, you're going to want to make a decision as to what to do with these policies. So the first one is processing time. So this is the time from when the person makes the order to when you are going to ship the order. You want to make this nice and clear to people because you want to set the expectation as to how long it's going to take them to receive your order and their order, I should say. Okay, so have a processing time in your policies, in your about page or wherever is you know obvious to your customer. I like to have them in the descriptions of the product as well. Now, obviously, if you have ready-made products, not such an issue because you're just going to ship them straight at the door. But for those of you like me who do products made to order, it's really important to have this processing time there. Now, very important here, what you need to do is you need to under promise and over deliver. Let me repeat that. You need to under promise and over deliver. For example, say it usually takes you two days to get something made. Make your processing time three days. Make it a little bit longer just to make sure if something goes wrong in your life, there's a glut of orders, you know, you've got a bit of cushion there. You've got a bit of leeway. My processing time is one to two weeks and it has been for years. I still make plenty of orders, right? I know, especially in this day and age, people, you know, you think that people expect things now, right now, but I find if you set the expectation with your customers that something's going to take a little bit longer because it's handmade, it's crafted specially for them, you know, you are making it for them. They are usually much more receptive and understanding of the fact that it takes time for you to make the thing. Yes, you're occasionally going to get a customer who's like, I want it yesterday. And you have to decide whether or not to take that order on. Now, just as an aside from the Etsy policies, one of the extra policies I have is an overtime fee. So how I phrase this is, this is a fee that you pay. It will get you your order made within one to two working days and in the post. 
And it's an overtime fee because we don't let people like jump the queue. So we actually work overtime hours to get your order made rather than just our normal working hours. And sometimes people take advantage of that because they just, you know, they are running late and they want to make sure they get their order in time. So consider having some sort of overtime fee rather than letting people jump the queue without giving you any compensation for it or stressing you out and making you work extra overtime hours to get their order out the door. The next one is estimated delivery time. Again, remember under promise and over deliver. So look at all the processing times from, you know, how long it's going to take to get to certain places. Your local post postal service should have these listed on their website. For me, it's Australia post. I just hop on and go and look through and go, okay, for this zone, they say it's going to take this long for that zone. It's going to take that long. And then I put that in my estimated delivery times again, with usually a little bit of a buffer on the, on the higher side of things, because I would rather somebody know, you know, or think it's going to take them three weeks for their order to arrive. And then it arrives in two than the other way around because the first way is how you have happy customers who go my stuff arrives sooner than i expected fantastic the other way around is when you have unhappy customers who complain about their order being late okay so remember to set those expectations early and remember to under promise and over deliver the next thing is customs and import taxes now there are a few a few difficulties with this um, there are some countries that expect you to actually gather this money for them, which is frustrating. Uh, by selling somewhere like Etsy, they kind of take care of all that for you. But if you do have your own website, this is something you're going to need to research and look into. I'm not going to go into it in this video, but you just need to make a statement about how you handle customs and import taxes and duties. So it may be that um, for the countries you're selling to, that the customer has to pay them upon entry, other countries that maybe that you've collected them for them, but just have this um, disclaimer that tells people how they're going to have to deal or you're dealing with the customs and import duties around their country. The next policy is payment options. You need to have a policy telling people how they can pay you, right? So do you take PayPal? Do you take credit cards? Do you take direct deposit? Do you take Afterpay or any of those um, things or Square? So just have it really clear on your website ahead of time in your policies section what methods of payment you take because that'll help your customer decide if they can buy from you or not or which method of payment they would prefer to use to buy from you. The next one's very important and it's returns, exchanges and cancellations. Okay, so you need to decide ahead of time whether you will accept returns or not and in which case for which products you will accept returns or not how much time the customer has to make that decision. So can they tell you in five days, 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, um, exchanges, will you, when you accept, you know, do you accept returns and do you do a refund? Do you do exchanges, uh, you know, of goods in, instead? Uh, cancellations, how long after the person orders is, are they able to cancel their order? So, you know, if you're someone who has the free made, somebody orders and you ship it out the same day, you need to make sure your cancellation policy basically states that they can't cancel once they've ordered because you might already have had it out the door. Whereas those of us who have a bit of time there can actually say, hey, you can cancel within 24 hours or something like that and get a full refund of your order. You just need to remember to take that into account when you are making somebody's order. If you do have, you know, a 24 hour cancellation period, don't start making the order <laughs> within the 24 hours. Give it that time to go by before you start actually crafting the order. Now, this is not just something you can make up. You actually need to look into the consumer laws in your country because they will probably have specific laws around what you can say here. So for example, Australia has the Australian consumer law. You can find it online if you're an Australian. I don't know what other countries have, but I know they have these laws. So make sure to have downloaded and read the, custom, uh, the, the consumer law document in your country to make sure that you are legally ab abiding by all of the things you need to be abiding by. So for example, here in Australia, if somebody buys something from me and then you know, I've sent it to them and they, or, or I haven't even sent it to them, but usually I have. So I've sent it to them and they're like, I don't actually like this. Can I return it? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. You can't. I don't accept exchanges. Uh, sorry. I don't accept returns for change of mind 
which is in accordance with Australian consumer law. And I actually put that in my policies to make it clear that by law, I don't actually have to accept a return from you if you change your mind. So please be sure that you really want this thing before you have ordered it. So look into the laws in your country, make sure that your policies are in line with those laws and you won't have hopefully any issues there. The last thing that's important to consider is a privacy policy. These days, a lot of countries require you to have a privacy policy where basically all it is, is you outline what you're going to do with the person's data, right? Does the per- does your customer have the right to contact you and ask that you remove them from your database to remove their personal details, all of that sort of stuff. Don't stress out here. You can easily find performance for this online. Just search, you know, online shop privacy policy example, and just basically kind of steal from somebody else's with a bit of changing, obviously, to make it your own and make it appropriate to your business. But there's plenty of examples out there. You can even go look at my Etsy shop and see what my privacy policy is. I'm pretty sure I basically um, copied most of that from an example that Etsy gave and just changed it to make it you know, proper for my website. And I did the same on my own website. I've got a privacy policy on there. So just have that information there um, just to abide, again, by the laws that require Uh, you to deal with this information in a certain way. All right, so now let's cover some extra things that I think should be in your policies, but that aren't in like the Etsy policy section. On Etsy, I put these things in my FAQ section, which like comes up straight after the policies. But be aware if you do sell on Etsy, anything you put in this FAQ section as a policy Etsy doesn't technically see it as a policy. So if you do get into a dispute with a customer and you go, hey, I've got it there in my policies, Etsy will be like, "Mm, no, you don't, because it's not actually technically in your policy document. However, obviously on your own website, you can do whatever you want with your policies. So I would advise you to include these things there. Now, I already mentioned the overtime policy, so we'll skip over that because I've already talked to you about it. Uh, The next one is shipping options. So I like to explain my shipping options to people in my policy page like if you're in this location this is the sort of shipping you can expect to have right just makes them easier it easier for them obviously on Etsy they already have that in the shipping section so that's a bit separate but it's just good to have it written out for people on your own website so again they know ahead of time what sort of shipping options they can expect from you the next one is packaging and gift wrapping do you offer gift wrapping, how do you package your items, give them a bit of an idea here of what it's going to look like when it arrives, is it going to be giftable, uh, you know, is that an up, an optional upgrade they can purchase, is proper gift wrapping, just, you know, this is not super important in the scheme of um, dealing with problems, but I, again, I think it's just a really nice thing to do for your customer to make it easy for them to decide, oh yeah, this is going to be a good choice, and it's all about, you know, the, again, setting those expectations And maybe convincing them to choose you over somebody else if you're like, everything I send is beautifully wrapped and you could give it as a gift. Sounds like an upsell option to me. The next one is a missing item policy. As far as I'm concerned, this is a huge oversight in the Etsy policies. (laughs) They really should allow you to have a policy for this. Uh, I think it's an incredibly important one to have. Basically, what is your policy if something goes missing in the post? Okay, what are you going to do? So how long? Uh, does a customer have to wait for you to say that it's missing? So you might have a domestic time and then a international time. I think mine's like 30 days domestic and 60 days international, which I think I've extended during COVID to like 90 days or something. Um, And then what happens if it never turns up? If it never arrives and it never returns to you, what is your policy? My personal policy is I replace the item once, always check with your customer the address. (laughs) Always double check that they gave you the right address. There's no mistakes in it. Uh, Get them to confirm the address before you send again. So I always send the product to them again uh, once. If it doesn't arrive the second time, then that's that. You know, it's obviously either they're fraudulent or something weird is going on in the system. But generally speaking, that is my policy. Uh, So you have to decide what your policy is going to be there. Are you just, are you going to replace or refund is usually the two options uh, because As much as it sucks, it's, you know, sure, the thing is out of your control. It's in the postal system. It's still your responsibility to get it to them, uh, even though it's out of your hands. So, you know, remember what you can do if that does happen is claim it 
with your post office. So actually submit a claim form. Um, if you had insurance, if you didn't, every postal service is different, but you should be able to hopefully get some sort of compensation from the postal service for losing the item, right? And hopefully that will sort of help you recoup your costs a little bit. It doesn't happen that often. I think, you know, everybody who sells online has had stuff go, go missing. I've had stuff go missing over the years, definitely, probably probably a couple of times a year, maybe once or twice a year, something just disappears, even with tracking sometimes, which is really frustrating, uh, and it just never shows up. So it's really important to have this policy in place. And it's also good because sometimes people just get a bit anxious, especially if there isn't tracking or if the tracking's showing delayed, and you can just sort of reassure them and go, hey, this amount of time is normal for something to be in transit. Uh, and if it doesn't show, and then you can reassure them by saying, if it doesn't show up in this time, this is my policy for, you know, I will send you a replacement or give you a refund. Okay. So I generally, I prefer to encourage you to replace rather than refund because you are less likely to get people being grifters and fraudulent in that case, right? If your policy is like, Hey, I'm just going to refund you. It doesn't turn up. You're kind of incentivizing people, bad people to just claim it hasn't turned up and get a refund. But if you, if your policy is not to refund, but to replace, well, they have less incentive to, to try it on with you basically. So I encourage you to consider having a, a um, replacement policy rather than a refund policy here. And that's pretty much it. Those are really the most important policies. You may like to have some, you know, FAQ further information that is specific to your business. Are there certain things people need to know about your particular products, about how they travel, about how they wear, um, about, you know, intricacies of your return policy? Like I have a special return policy for wedding rings that if people get the wedding rings and they decide they don't like them, they can send them back and order another set for me at a slight discount you know, something like that. Um, what, you know, with rings, I have a resizing policy because obviously if people get their ring and it's the wrong size, what, what happens, you know? So I have a clear policy on that, that, you know, it's their responsibility to get the right size and that I don't refund or, re or replace if you get the size wrong. Um, and that, but that I do offer resizing and I should tell them the fee in my, you know, policies document what, how much that's going to cost them. So, Think further than what I've just talked about here. If there's anything specific, you know, do you sell clothes like or like lingerie or swimwear that can't be returned for hygiene reasons or earrings? Um, all of those sorts of little details should also be in your policies, but that's going to be specific to your particular business. All right, that is it for another video. Hey, if you want to get access to a whole bunch of free downloads that I have available, including my 25 essential tips for handmade business success, head on over to createandthrive.com forward slash start here. And by subscribing to my email list, you will get access to a bunch of those freebies. And you'll also get an email from me every week telling you what's on the podcast, what's on the YouTubes, <laughs> uh, what else is happening, uh, workshops that I'm running, all that sort of fun stuff. And uh, I'll keep you in the loop as to what's going on. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please do give me a big thumbs up. It really helps me know that I'm on the right track and helping you out. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that other people might find this useful. And make sure if you haven't already, of course, to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos on a how to have a thriving and profitable handmade business. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I will be back soon with another video and bye for now.